What's going on guys? It's King Tuts Pro and welcome back to another Final Cut Pro 10 tutorial. In today's tutorial, I'm going to show you guys some tips and tricks and I'm going to be also answering some of your guys' questions and concerns, kind of like a troubleshooting for Final Cut Pro 10 because I get a lot of these questions asked a lot every day in Instagram as well as on Twitter and Final Cut Pro 10. I know I can't answer all of your guys' questions, so sorry for that. First one is, how do you change the project settings, okay? So let's look at this video right here, okay? Let's look at this one, okay? So this is a pretty pretty basic video. It's pretty smooth. This is the, the, uh, the sky replacement tutorial I made a couple of days ago. This is the video right here, and let's go ahead and change the project settings, okay? Now, when you first create a project in the file and new project window, the command end option here, you guys can change the frame rate, the video resolution, or the format, and then the video resolution, the name, the audio, as well as the rendering and the codec. And you save it, right? But let's say you want to change it for any reason and you don't know how to get there. So if you click on the window option at the very top, and you go to the project properties or command J this will take you to this window in the inspector window right here you can't change the frame rate which is unfortunately sad but you can change the project name the starting time code the video uh, format so let's say we want to make it up to 1080p HD and the resolution you can make that even uh, you could do 1440 by 1080 p or 1280 by 1080 now I know that you can't you don't have all of the options that you first had when you first created the project that is because Final Cut Pro 10 limits you to what you can change after you create something but at least you can change it it's kind of the same thing kind of goes for Premiere Pro you can create a project and later you can change it but the good thing is you're more it's more flexible with Premiere Pro than Final Cut Pro 10. Now, another really cool trick here is adding transitions, okay? You have your video here and you want to add a transition quick. You can just click on it and press command T for the shortcut to add a quick transition on your audio as well as a video. So now you can see that there is a transition between these two clips. If we double click on this, this will give you a more advanced option with the transition. So it's more precise. We have this right here, and then it kind of fades to the next clip, okay? So this video right here is the one that's gonna fade into this one right here at this time. Or maybe you wanna make it longer. And you can even drag this in between. So this will fade out while this fades in. So that's kind of how I look at it. And you can move this to wherever you want. And over here in this window, it will also give you a nice little preview of what's going to be happening. So it looks like the one on the left is the video on top, and the one on the right is the video on the bottom. So you can see that if we move it over this right here where it's going to transition. So maybe you want to tra transition it from after the sky clears up, this blue sky is going to kind of come into into place. To get out of that, just double click on the transition there. And I'm going to go ahead and disable this clip so you guys can see it. So now if I push play, it's going to go ahead and render that out just like we wanted it to go as you can see there. Now you'll also notice that there is not there's these lines right here. And I get this question asked a lot and that is how do we render something and what's the point of rendering when or when should we use the rendering option? If you guys don't know, uh, Final Cut Pro 10 does have a rendering option. If you go to the modify and you go to render all and we have render selection. The reason we have this is because let's say we're doing something very task intensive so we have a video here and we're going to add a we're going to go ahead and slow it down to 25%. You can already see that there's dots which means this video has to be rendered in order to play the video back in real time as well as playing it without. So if we were to push play, you can see that it's going to be very laggy. So I'm going to push play. You can see that it's very choppy and not smooth. And I'm going to go to video quality and I'm going to do optical flow. So now if I push play, it's very choppy but it's still smooth. The reason for that is because we have the background render checked. So if we go to Final Cut Pro 10, we go to Preferences, and we go to Playback, we have the background render. And that will start automatically after every 0.3 seconds, or you can make it every 2.3 seconds. Let's go ahead and add a kind of like a hard light to this, make it even darker. You're going to see that there's like these little dots here. To manually render it, if you don't have that option checked, go to Modify and go to Render All if you want to render everything in the timeline or render selection if you want to render whatever is highlighted. You go to modify and render all and this will play the video back nice and smooth as you can see. So that is pretty much the render option. Same thing goes with After Effects. 
when you're making something in After Effects, the video is very choppy and it won't even play all the way through because it has to be rendered first. It kind of applies to this as well. Now, another kind of interesting question that I get is when you're importing videos or audio or pictures, whatever it is, if we go to File and we go to, I believe it's Import and Media, we have the option to import a video. I'm going to do my intro here. And by the way, this intro is not mine. It's my network's network uh it's my network's intro they created this i'm partnered with curse so just wanted to clear that up uh so if we go to the right we have a couple of settings that we can change before we import the video into the browser the reason for this is because when we want to analyze and fix our video and audio if we go to analyze and fix we have the option to analyze the video for balanced color we can uh, go ahead and analyze that if you want this will take an extra step to render before you can even edit other videos as well so just keep that in mind and right here you can also analyze and fix audio problems as well uh, which is pretty cool now the transcoding this is probably one of the most important parts when you're importing your clips or whatever it is the reason for this is because if we want if we were to import a video that is a large file size and, we're, and I'm talking about a 4k video then you want to make sure that the create optimized media is checked now the reason we do that is because well, for one, it is going to make the video file size bigger, but your video size will kind of retain the same resolution and quality as it is. Uh, so just keep that in mind. And when you export it, it will kind of still stay the same. Now, the Create Proxy Media, the reason for that, or the reason we want to check that is because it will make the video optimized for uh, faster editing when you're in the timeline or adding clips and effects. It will take less time to add than the Optimized Media option. And it also makes the file size smaller, so it's a good idea to have that checked if you want. I always have it checked because it's very important. But let's say your computer isn't running at its fastest with Final Cut Pro 10. What we can do is we can go to the view here, and we can go ahead and go onto the quality, and we have better quality checked. That is because, honestly, I like to edit my videos in full resolution so if we click on better performance now you can tell that the video will be a little bit uh, choppy not choppy but the video quality will be a little bit less clear until you pause it or stop the video and the reason for that is because it will kind of take down the resolution down a bit so it doesn't have to use all of the RAM or the pixels to put out on your screen and that kind of also applies to Premiere Pro if you have the option right here to change it to like full which is the the same option here that we have in better quality although they only give you two options but in Adobe Premiere Pro they give you the option to go down to like half or three-fourths another cool little tip and trick I guess is getting rid of this thing here now it can always be distracting having this thing you don't want to be looking at it to actually remove it temporarily you can go to the top right and have this option to hide the browser or not click on that and that will get rid of it so you only have the video that you're working with that will just keep you more focused on your video than having the distractions there. If you want to go ahead and get rid of the timeline, you can click on this right here, but you have to have the browser enabled for that. And uh, that will get rid of the timeline. It makes it easier for you to find your files and browse through projects. Uh, now the other option is the inspector. I honestly would suggest you guys always having the inspector open because it's faster that way. I mean, that's pretty much it for this video. I know I didn't go in depth or I didn't kind of answer all of you guys' questions, but I hope you guys found this video helpful. If you guys did, please leave a like. That'd be awesome. Subscribe if you haven't. Comment down what you guys want to see next, and I'll catch you guys on my next video. Until then, peace out, take care, and enjoy your day.